going off course to see a Viking launch. No, that, this definitely makes it work. <laughs> We set off from Lagimera having to beat into large waves with 30 knots of wind. After only a few hours we decided to head to Tenerife and wait for a better weather window. Well our sail has ended a little bit shorter than what we wanted. Um, we've only been going like a few hours and the wind has just gone crazy. It's up to 31, 32 knots. But it's not. Ma it's mainly the waves was doing us over so we were facing into the wind and the waves were hitting us. and. We were doing like Four, one seven, knot. Gusting Four seven gusting eight. That's what we had. So we've decided to stop in the bay in Tenerife that we originally stayed in. What? You whispering? She's whispering because I had a whispering when we we're anchoring, so so we didn't wake up any of the other boats. But they can't hear you in here, Paige. Yeah, they can. He's only behind us. He's laughing at me now. But yeah, so we're gonna carry on our journey probably tomorrow if the uh, weather's good. If not, then we'll be staying here until the weather's good enough to depends get to the It depends if we can get a weather forecast or at least a wind forecast that's actually accurate for once. He's alright, scranny bum when he's just woke up. We're just about to set off from our anchorage. As you can tell, it's quite oh well. The waves don't look anything in here, but the swell's quite bad. Um, so there's no point in us sticking around. It's going to be a force four, force five the entire time, so it's That'll probably going to be... six to seven with Windy TV. Four, six, four, seven with Windy TV. Although Predict Wind is staying the same, so we shall see. We've got our stays, so we're all good. I'd hate to be on that boat over there. Oh, God, it's a bit bright. <laughs> really rocking. Yeah. I'm just time to uh, leave this place. Go back to Grand Canary where it was nice and uh, enjoy ourselves. So Matthew, what's this force four, force five like? Non-existent. We got three knots, and we should be starting to get the acceleration zone now. Can't make his mind up. <laughs> force seven gusting eight in the night, so we made to Tenerife to get out of it. And now we're here, ready to sail, and we've got no wind. We've even got the reef, deep, uh, the uh, main deep reef in case, and ready to put out the staysail. It looks like when we're. Uh, Need a bit more. Well, we don't have any wind, but we have an excited Matthew. What's going on? There's a Viking long ship over there. I'm gonna go take a look. Matthew, no, we're this... steering off course to see a Viking long ship. No, this definitely makes it work. <laughs> Bloody hell. Off we go then. Because it's happy for you. I can't believe he's steering this way to go and see it. We later found that Ragnarok was a tour boat offering Viking themed day trips all over Tenerife. So we finally got enough wind to sail, so we've got our full rig out. I'll show you. Cutter, uh, cutter, staysail and our Genoa and our main, although our Genoa's flapping a bit, so it needs tightening. Yeah, it needs But, uh, go on, Matthew, how far off course are we going to go to the wind? A long way off course, because the wind's coming right for one. No, I think it might shift as we go further off. Because it's, um, it's meant to be coming straight down there, but it seems to be coming from there. So I reckon that's coming around the land. So as we get further out, I reckon we'll be able to go back on course.
motoring area. The last bits of the sailing weren't well, we motored, but the uh, actual sailing was awesome. Uh, we're back to where we went on the jet boat, because it's probably the best anchorage there is in Green Canaria, so far, that we've found. And it has an epic ice cream parlour too, so that's good. If you can't hear me very well, it's because Matthew's blasting out his tunes. It's over here. We're filled up on water and water and fuel. We just need to go to shore and get some food. But look at what I'm having for lunch. A pucka pie. Chicken and mushroom pucka pie. And there you go, you can watch him as he air guitars. I'm sure you're all very impressed. And then we're gonna make some videos and yeah, chill out. Matthew's singing to his hillbilly music and he's making us French toast that we've never had before. I'm not looking forward to it really, it looks a bit gross. And then we've got places, we're going to tidy out the forepeak which has got all our dive gear in, upload some videos, create new ones and basically have a practical day. What are you doing today Ronald? You just said. You're making eggs all day. Yeah. No, I'm sorting up the, uh, what's it called? So things are definitely going to get more untidy before they get better. So Matthew has been putting the tanks, squished them in here. They're definitely not rocking around or anything because they are squished in. But there's not enough room for another two. So he's now gone to wreck the bedroom. So I think he's put some clothes on. I'll go check before I film. Yes, he is dressed, but he's just taken apart my nicely made bed. Mash up Matthew. My cushy. Where are you thinking of putting these ones then? Under the bed. Oh, if you look at this, guys. Oh, not that 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 mark is from the previous owners. We haven't wet bed, but this bed here. Yeah, you did. Paige has been wet in the bed. That's Matthew's side of the bed. I'm just saying. My side, nicely tucked on. Matthew pulls the bedding off every night. So now I've, I've resorted to leaving it Your like purpose. that. purpose. He's got a thing for it. Just seems to be something I do in my sleep. <clears throat> I'm, in the way. I'm gonna have to move. I asked Matthew to check my pie, and this is what he's done to it. He stuck a fork in the middle of it. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Matthew. And my result is it's good. So, Matthew, uh, you're laid like a prostitute. Thanks for that. Um, where are the tanks then? Where did we? Where did you stick them? Uh, there's two under this sofa, part of the sofa. There's two under that part of the sofa, and there's two under our bed. So they're all safely away. We managed to sort of tidy up the four peak now. It's just waiting for some bedding to go on, and then we're pretty much all sorted, ready for guests. Yep, and Doritos. Oh yeah, we're going to be making Doritos tonight and showing you the recipe. It's no recipe. It's just budging stuff together. <laughs> the Sorry, Matthew methods. <laughs> so Matthew's cooked, well boiled the chicken. How long did you boil the chicken for? Boil well, the uh, chicken for about twenty minutes. And now he's shredding it with two forks. Yeah, and then shred it up. I've only used one chicken breast because uh, what we did is we went to the shop um, the other day and they had chicken breast, but it was in packs of three. So we've used two for a meal, which left us the one, which is perfect because you don't really need much for the nachos for just two of us. I mean, you get all the nachos anyway. So I just shred it up and then I'll mix it with the um, sauce we've got. Uh, best stuff I've ever used was from Lidl and it was a bit like the curry pots you can get um, it was a f fajita one it was fajita sauce I thought you was going <laughs> what's it called um, Hannibal Lecter <laughs> uh, so it was the f doing it again <laughs> five fajita <-fer> beans, <laughs> <Five -fer> beans. <laughs> it was the fajita one and that was uh, it was a good one. I've also used chilli sauce, that's been good before, for like chilli con carne. But we've got nothing like that here, so for today we've gone for... They're in the cupboard. Wherever pages put them, they're in here. We've got two hot salsa ones, the cheapest ones we can find. Uh, hot salsa dip, so that'll do two of them, and that'll do for the uh, sauce. And I'll mix that with the chicken, and then I'll start laying the nachos out. Uh, right, so now we've shredded the chicken. All nicely shredded up, so we'll just add two of these. Pop. Oop. Nice uh, spicy dip. Just get it all in there. There we go. Mix it up a bit. Now I'll just mix it up 
and then I'll lay out the nachos and start building. Uh, for the nachos, I use random cheeses, whichever ones I can get hold of, depending on the shops. I mean, the, the Mexican four cheese is normally the best. Some shops have it. Today I'll be using slices of cheddar and mozzarella. Matthew's shredded chicken. And no, he's being cheeky saying I ate a lot of the nachos. No, I didn't. I had a few. So we'll lay out the, uh, the base layer. Simple as that. We'll you love half. saying that, don't you? Simple, Simple as, as that. that. Gubbins. Then we'll put about half on the uh, the first layer. I'll do two layers. So it's more more interesting. There we go. And then we'll use the cheddar for the uh, for the internal layer. And we'll put mozzarella on top. I think. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to open this, am I? Oh no, no, oh, no. no! We don't have to cut no, it to him, no, Matthew. Does it? No. Has he got it? Has he got it? Are there big manly fingers too much for the little packet? Because it's wet. Boom, he's done it. He's done it. That looks like plastic cheese. Use your plastic cheese. Oh, and I love cheese. It's not that plasticky burger one, no, is it? No, no, it's actual cheddar cheese. Oh, okay. I don't like the stuff you get, like dairy slabs yeah, of cheese for your mean, yeah. English barbecues. That, that Bloody hell, Matthew. <laughs> are good, this is where we get our bikini bodies from. Uh, second layer of uh, Dorito chips. Tortilla chip thingies, there we go. That's a nice layer. The rest of the meat on. Do we have some jalapenos on? I uh, will put some on. Yeah, we'll, we'll put some. I should have mixed that in with this really, but... I think it's already got them in, this hot one. Is it? And we'll put all that on. Probably. Yeah. We'll have two bums in the morning if Smish we have any it more. Around. There we go. Put that nacho there. Because it was getting away. And then cover the rest with mozzarella. I don't know, hun. Cut to when Matthew opens a mozzarella. I don't know if we caught that, but Matthew just sprayed mozzarella everywhere. Mozzarella ball? It's all over the and bloody let's camera. Mush this up. Uh, yes, we'll mush this up. Oh, it looks like poached egg. It does, doesn't it? Melts nicely though. Oh, Matthew, that looks gross. I need a top that says, oh, Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Even the guy at the dock was saying it. Oh, Matthew. Are you putting, is that enough cheese? No, we're gonna need more. No, we don't. You don't need more cheese than that. Matthew, you don't need more cheese. You do. It's a secret ingredient, which isn't so secret. Just loads of cheese. Needs to be like dripping off and stuff. So, if you like cheesy nachos, cheesy pizza, and spicy food, you will get along with us on board. Oh, and steak. Oh, Matt, it looks like mashed potato it's gonna now. It's going to melt quite nicely and it should all kind of drip down and stuff. There we go. So, there is the finished product of Matthew's. Uh, now, we'll put it in the oven for about 10 minutes at 200 degrees. Celsius, gas mark four, God knows, I don't, no idea. It just, we turn it and it, it kind of sets the temperature. Set your oven to warm, stick yeah. them in, and when the cheese is melted, yeah. Once the cheese is melted, because all the meat's cooked anyway, so once it's all melted, we're good to go. There you go. And here they go, and we'll come back to them in 10 minutes. Have you even heated the oven up? She has no confidence in me, does she? Of course I've heated the oven up, but did not see it's on. So here's the finished, uh, Concoction. Cheese. I found that the uh, the mozzarella probably wasn't working very well, so I added some more cheddar. Could have done with putting mozzarella on the middle there, but it's just make it up as you go, really. It's uh, it's quite an easy one to do. Is so it now supposed we're to eat have this. like an England flag made out of cheese on it? Well, it's not an England one because it's not red and white, but, well, I know, but it's like... not far off. Matthew is playing D and D. He looks like a Cyberman when you look at him from the front. <laughs> Matthew's just having a five minute break from his D&D. &D. He's using the iPad, my laptop, 
the internet, so I can't use any of the things. I have to just sit here while he plays as a barbarian. Well, How's it going? Up. How's it going? It's going well. We're going well. We're, we're beating stuff up. We're all back to full health now, taking a rest. And we're just having a five minute break while people go get drinks. So. But I quite like these barbarian characters, they're good. I've never played a barbarian. I normally play paladin, but it's barbar bar barbarian smashing stuff up. So we've had a chill few days here where we haven't really done anything much. We just got to uh, doing some jobs that we needed to do, like videos and everything. And now we're heading to Lanzarote. So it's usually, what are the prevailing winds here normally? Northeasterly. Northeasterly prevailing winds, but the winds actually change around to a... Southeasterly. Southeasterly, which means that we won't be beating against the wind. And it should be a Force 4, probably a Force 5, Augustine 6, knowing Windy TV. But um, yeah, it should be on a beam. Keep looking at him for confirmation. Is it a beam? Yes. Yes, all the way. So it should take 24 hours. It's now quarter to one and we should get there tomorrow about the same time. So fingers crossed for not big waves and no 35 knots. But it should be a fun sail. have just made it to Rubicon. Um, it wasn't that great of a sale. We were supposed to have Force 4, Force 5 the entire time, apart from at night when it was supposed to die down a little bit. But we ended up with hardly any wind, like eight knots the entire time. So we didn't get any sailing done for the yesterday. So we didn't film much because I don't think you guys want to see us just motoring along. Um, and then last night, early hours of this morning, we picked up to like 25 knots. So we got some good sailing done there and then it dropped away to nothing again and then just in between Fortaventura and Lanzarote um, there's the acceleration zone, I think it's an acceleration zone and it picked up again to 25 knots so perfect sailing again we're now in Rubicon Marina um, that was interesting, Nova's um, she struggles with the wind, she has a lot of windage so when they put you next to another boat it's kind of heart-wrenching because she just didn't want to steer in but we got away, touch wood no one boats got crushed, Nova didn't get crushed, we did it perfectly but it took two attempts because the wind took us back out um, but yeah we're kind of tired just want to go get one of them Lanny's whole chickens and devour that and then um, yeah shower what's going on McRonald? well I'm trying to relax after a long tail but I'm getting a camera pushed in my face on her yes yeah. uh, I've been to the boatyard, the same one that fitted our new furler and I've uh, booked us in to be lifted out on Friday at 10 o'clock, so lifting us out. They've got Hempel uh, Antifoul, which is eco-friendly stuff, self-polishing. Says it should work quite well with our international micro extra. Or if I want, I can get the, they'll order me an international, but it costs more. So I think we're just going to go with the Hempel stuff. So we'll get that done. They've got the Hempel ready to go. They've got the rollers, everything. So it's just... Lift out, jet wash, then I light sand, let her dry, and then I can acne foul, so. And they said I, we could stay out as long as we want, so we're probably going to stay out for a week and let the hole dry in, and uh, get all the work done. I'm sure the last time we were filming in Rubicon, you was laid here with that uh, shirt I think, on. I think so. I think I was the other way around. I think my head was that <laughs> way, so that, that's the difference. But yeah, we're back here. Join us next time as we get Nova lifted out, re-antifoul and dive Museum Atlantico.